Up your heads, and we got to talk. You've been using Scotch Brown on these heads, and I can tell. All right, all kidding aside, this is October, and it is Halloween, and it is scary what they did to these cylinder heads. I'm going to show you what Scotch Brite has no place on an aluminum cylinder head. I know everybody's doing it, I know the dealerships are doing it. That doesn't mean it's right. Only because you can doesn't mean you should. All right, don't feel bad. I'm going to take you out back and I'm going to show you what it does so you can see it with your own eyes. Once you see it, I don't think you'll ever touch an aluminum cylinder head with the Scotch Brite ever again. All right, come on. All right, here's a cylinder head dude, that we just milled, had to touch the surface. It didn't take a thousands, thousands and a half to clear the surface. What we did notice when they use Scotch Brite, it actually rounds the edges off. It looks real shiny, but it was leaking combustion from right here into the water port. So you have a combustion chamber right here, you have a quarter inch area right here, and it was actually seeping combustion into the radiator, and it didn't understand why. They pulled the cylinder heads off, they replaced the head gaskets, put them back on. A, make sure you have a flat surface. If the very least, lap the surface to see if it's good, get rid of this. This right here is what we want to get rid of. That's what this video is about. No scotch bright. No scotch bright. It has no place. They hit it with scotch bright all the way around. You can see the high and low spots. And I don't care how fine of scotch bright you have. You can have all of these little scotch brights. You can have them all you want. You might as well be using this or a grinding wheel. Because to me, or to a cylinder head, it's the same thing. So, if you're gonna get Scotch Brite to it, you might as well go ahead and throw this on the back of your vehicle, put a chain on it, have your buddy stand on it, and drag it on the street. You've seen that video, and you're gonna do about the same thing. This is an overhead cam. It's dual overhead cam. There's adjustments in here because it's not hydraulic. It has buckets in there. And the more you cut here, it's gonna affect the top end. You're thinking, how? It has a chain. How are you going to retime the engine? Yes, you have variable cam timing. Yes, there's computers. It all affects everything. The point being, you want to cut as little as possible off the deck. So, get rid of the Scotch Brite. I'll show you the cylinder head on the mill. We'll do a half thousandths cut, and you can see uh, where Scotch Brite isn't really the thing to do. All right, welcome back. Got some Dykeman's Blue. And let's just lightly mist the cylinder head. And then we can see when I do a half thousandths cut, what the surface looks like in real life, not in imaginary Scotch Bright life. Let's get to the mill and I'll set this up. I'm sorry, you thought I wasn't gonna come back, didn't you? Look at that. Here. 
You see that? You see that? Zero. And we can go all the way over. We can go any spot on the cylinder head we want. Zero. What we normally want is the four bolt holes at the end. If you take Scotch Bright to it, it's going to be all over the place. But we got our four bolt holes at zero. I said bolt holes. I know. Here y'all laughing over there. All right. We got it perfectly flat now within zero. And then I'm going to go ahead and just do maybe a quarter of a thousandth, just skim, lightly skim, so that we can see what the deck looks like. But we know that we're all at zero. So it's not like, oh, he had the machine angled wrong. No, we don't. So let's go ahead and start milling. All right, I've sprayed Dyklin's blue across the top of it. And that is just so that we can see what's happening. And for no other reason than just a visual so that you can see the spots that we touch. We're going to do a light skim cut just so that we can see what the Scotch Bright does. Put your safety glasses on and join me while we cut this. And here we go. Fingers out of the way. <laughs> Can you see that? Can you see that? There we go. Can you see what's appearing or disappearing? Now, I'm using the stream of just lightly, I think I may have done a half a thousand, which is five tenths of one thousand. So we're in the tenth. I just skimmed the top. You saw that I zeroed in all four bolt holes. Actually, we zeroed in and I swept across the whole area. And we were within zero, we were there. So we can't say, oh, the head wasn't angled properly. No, it was there. Uh, I took the time to sweep the whole cylinder head and we were zero, zero, zero everywhere. You saw it on the video. Now you're seeing what's coming back. This is extreme, I'm taking my time just to go through all of this to show you how you need to leave the Scotch Bride alone. I'm being serious here. You, you need to, it has no purpose no place at all unless you're doing exhaust manifolds or I don't know you know exhaust pipes or why am I picking on exhaust I'm not but you know what I mean so the technician took Scott Bright and man man look beautiful smooth it you know the more shine you put onto it the better what happened when he torqued his cylinder head back down with a brand new head gasket well all the pressure was here here here, there, there, there. Didn't have any, any load here, did it? It was tightening up here. So the PSI and the pressure, which should be around the singing ring, was not there and it leaked. On the other head, we actually had two low spots right here that were passing combustion. If you can see here, we're probably gonna have that as well on this head. So you're seeing it right there. Got the right real good. I would rather you take a razor blade, and I shouldn't say that because you're gonna scratch the head all up, but what I do, take a, a fine brand new razor blade that hasn't been touched on any surface and lightly skim the top if there's gasket material on. After that, I would rather you use a piece of granite 
on some 400 wet and dry, 600, 800, and lightly touch the surface if you want to check if it needs to be surfaced or not. But a tech there in their garage can use some emery cloth on a piece of granite, lightly hit the surface and a feeder gauge, and you would know if it has to come into the shop to get resurfaced. So what happened? Well, he sanded all the way around. Really nice. You wonder why it's um, leaking? Why it has combustion gases in the radiator? If we zoom in nice and close, look at all of that. I mean, how's it gonna seal combustion gases? It's torquing down out here, it's getting a nice clamping force right here. What clamping force is it doing here? And you wonder why combustion gases are getting into the radiator. Hmm, hmm. Alrighty then. There we go. Look at that. Did you notice how on the way back it cleaned it up? We're only doing five tenths of a cut. I mean, we're not doing much at all. So it'll actually, on the way back, it's a different uh, angle on the cutter and it's pretty cool. Um, look at how I skimmed it. I should have been able to clean this head up. On the other hand, it didn't take a thousands and a half, two thousands, but look at this head. Alright, I wanted to show you all that. Alright, let me wait till that turns off. Alright, so now you can see what using Scotch Bright did to this cylinder head. All this diagnostics, the labor that went on to put this pair of heads on, dual overhead cams, brand new head gasket, fired up, run it in the first day it started leaking already. Look at that. Leave the scotch bright alone, people. All right. All right. So leave the scotch bright alone. Throw it away. Go to the back of your shop, the back door. Toss it as far as you can. The youngest guy at the shop, have him go out, pick it up, and toss it as far as he can. It has no place in the shop. I know you have to uh, go to the extremes that I'm talking about. I would rather it have no place in the shop. There is places for it. Like I said, an exhaust manifold, a uh, rusty pipe, maybe. Um, not on an aluminum deck. All right, hope you've enjoyed this video. More, a little more in-depth in the back of the shop. I just thought I'd have to show you about scotch Bright and how it has no place. Thank you. Hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, hit the like and subscribe. Let me know what you'd like to see. We'll see you on the next one. All right, we're back. I hope I've shown you what Scotch Bright does to an aluminum cylinder head. Now that you know, I don't think you'll ever do that again. I hope it's been informative, educational, entertaining, any of those. Hit a like and subscribe, tell your buds, tell your friends. I'll see you on the next one. Hello YouTube and welcome back. In this video we're going to be talking about this bad dude right here, Scotch Bright, and how you don't want Scotch Bright anywhere near an aluminum head. So, here's one we just finished. I'm going to add some video of showing you how they this was into beep. All right, now we're back. I've shown you what Scotch Bright does. I feel comfortable releasing these heads to you now, and hopefully. This won't happen again to this particular customer, this particular garage. Um, it's all in...
that's what we want look at there all right ready for the customer to come pick it up it's going back into service hope you enjoyed the video that's what we want not what you saw earlier and uh maybe maybe all right here's what a cbn mill looks like and you're thinking about what am i talking about we're talking about this cutter right here that's a cbn cutter right there this little dude spins at a high rate of speed whoops spins at a high rate of speed and does an ultra fine finish we even have some mallory weight there to balance this so that's a cbn mill this over here is not a cbn mill and what it has is cutters let me see if i can can you see these cutters here there's 12 of those and the key to an old dinosaur like this is putting a dollar indicator right in here dollar indicating every single bit to not within anything zero zero one tenth of a thousandth if anything if you get all 12 perfectly zero you've speeded up this head times 12. so now we have a high speed mill out of an old speed mill Does that makes sense that should be another video look at there